Shalom, shalom. This is Kapari, a.k.a. Pops at Gym at Chicago with another sit-down. Before I get started, like always, I want to send all praises, honor, and glory out to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bahashem, and To the apostles and elders of Gym out of New York, I want to send double honors because they do real well. To the brethren around the world, pushing this truth uncut, unfiltered, giving you the good, the bad, and the ugly of the scriptures, correctly breaking down prophecies and interaction with people and planning our sin salutations. For the hopeful elect, I hope this is edifying. For the aqua, if you're in true, this listens to say in charity, keep doing so. The first going is called for reprobate two third Israelites, 17 other nations. It's closer than what you think. Jacob's trouble, I mean, Jacob's trouble, it, you're in the midst of, and it's getting a whole lot worse. It's a lot closer than what you think. So anyway, with all that having been said, I want to send, uh, go to these scriptures, break this down. Just something quick, you know. I hope it's quick anyway. Uh, starting with Psalms 6 and 1. Um, to a chief musician, Annette, Nay Janoth, upon uh, Shemitha, a Psalm of David, okay. Actually, being, O Yahweh, rebuke me not in thine anger, nor chasten me in thy heart displeasure. Okay, have mercy upon me, O Yahweh, for I am weak, O Yahweh. Heal me, for my bones are vexed. Have mercy upon me, O Yahweh, for I am weak. Mm. David was a mighty man, great warrior, the whole deal. But he's saying here he was weak. So if a great warrior can say he can weak, can be weak, excuse me, how much more us, considering the fact that it said that we would wax worse and worse, and we would go, and in stature, we'd get weaker and weaker as time went on. Okay. So if um, you're in that mindset to think you don't need to pray and all these other kinds of stuff, um, you're in a bad mind state. Okay. You, it says that um should be in constant prayer. Okay. It says that uh, scripture says that the uh, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So, you know. So why are you not praying? ask myself that question and even though I pray every day I still feel like I'm not praying enough so if I'm praying every day for the most part and I, and I still don't feel like I'm praying enough where, where you at in your walk okay where you at Ezekiel 3. I know there's going to be some kind of awkward scriptures to be. Ezekiel 3. So this is going to get me. This just went real stupid. Should have came up by now. So it's doing something stupid. Okay, Ezekiel 3. Um, going down to verse 7. Okay. Because you see, the two-thirds aren't praying. Okay. Not praying in the correct mind frame. Ain't not, not going and doing those things and whatnot. And, you know, they have no fear of what Yahweh Bashimau Shah is capable of or the destruction that he's going to bring to the table. Okay. I'm going to read this seven and jump down. 
Ezekiel 3 and 7, But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. Okay? For all the house of Israel is impudent and, and hard-hearted, hard head. But as part of the lake, we're supposed to be able to listen to each other on some level. And, and things that line up with the scriptures, we do those things. Are we perfect? No. And these scriptures will beat you up at times. You know? So Rock says that, you know, uh, this wisdom is going to take you by. His, let me, as a matter of fact, let me get that. Let me get that. I'm a, I ain't gonna lose this page though where I'm at, but I want to go over here to this and read this because you see, it says that it's gonna take you by some tough places. You know what I'm saying? This wisdom. Listen. Ah. Uh, I want to read this first, then I'm going to come back to that, uh, that Ezekiel. This is uh, Sirach 4 and 16. If a man commit himself unto her, which is wisdom, he shall inherit her, and his generation shall hold her in, her in possession. For at first she will walk with him by crooked ways, and bring fear and dread upon him, and torment him with her discipline. Okay. Sin being what it is, being part of you, being inbred, being part of your makeup. You know, you can put it off. Put it like I said, and the scripture tells you, don't let it weigh before you, but then David said his sin is forever before him. So you know, you it, it can make you even question, are you are you perfectly balanced the way you need to? Okay. Scripture tells you don't let your sins weigh you down. But they can come back and do all those things. So this is a tricky balance that you have to have. Okay. That you have to have. There's no getting around it. Why am I doing this lesson? Because of the fact that, like I said, you know, you can be up and then you can be down. This is part of the human nature. So you try to find that equilibrium. Don't let your highs be too high. Don't let your lows be too low. Because you, if you, when you're self-examining yourself, you're going to see all your lows and that could bring you down. Okay? Okay. So let me go on and finish this read. 4 and 16. If a man commit himself into her, he shall inherit her, and his generation shall hold her in possession. For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him. What is the fear and the dread? That the Lord will destroy you. That the Lord, that the fear of the Lord will destroy you. That the Lord will do. I mean, the fear and the dread is that the Lord will destroy you. Okay. And torment him with her discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. Then she will turn. Then she will return the straight way unto him and comfort him and show him her secrets. But if he go wrong, she will forsake him and give him over to his own ruin. What do you think scripture is saying? Examine thyself to know if you're in the faith or not. Okay? And you could be doing things that are right at that moment and have something knock you off, knock you out. 
make you ask the question, knock you down. Then the scriptures tell you a just man will fall seven times, and that just means that the com uh, a complete number. It don't mean it's only seven times. It just means that you'll fall and mess, mess up things and this, that, and other all at the same time and have to get back up. That's where this lesson is going. Getting back up. Because you're going to get knocked down. Okay. Verse 20 and Sirach 4. Observe the opportunity and beware of evil and be not ashamed when it concerneth thy soul. Observe the opportunity and beware of evil and be not ashamed when it concerneth thy soul. When them thoughts come up and it's got you questioning things. It'll be nothing more than a pride check, making you pull yourself back in the line. Because things was going good. Well, so you thought. Now, I'm speaking from experience. So you can't let your highs get too high and you can't let your lows go too low. Okay. Back to Ezekiel 3, verse 7. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel is impudent and hard hearted. This is the two thirds. And plumb up until you came out of that light into this light, you were two thirds. So this is going to be all that confusion that can be in you that can have you twisted up. But if you're doing the right thing and you're praying, you're fasting, and you ask the Lord to keep you on the straight and narrow, that's what makes you part of the, that's what could make you part of the hopeful elect. Because you're not walking around here thinking that you absolutely got it. Let me take this down to 17. 3 and 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. You're a watchman. And the fact that these scriptures can beat you up and have you twisted up and have you, you know, questioning yourself and, and, and hoping, that you're per, hoping that you're on point and you're doing the right thing. That's not a bad thing. The fact that you even care about the scriptures and hoping that you're lying up is a great thing. The ones that think they got it sometimes can be held to kelter. Think they not think that they got it so they don't have to question whether or not they're part of the hopeful elect scary spot to be in but then having the confidence to know that I'm doing the things I'm supposed to do so you gotta be able to shake that off too you know what I'm saying this is a this is a tricky slope to, this is a tricky slope that you walk in okay but the confidence isn't supposed to be in you. It's supposed to be in your Howard shot that he's absolutely going to do what he says he's going to do. And that's where your confidence comes from. It ain't you. It's the confidence that you have that your Howard shot is who he say he is and can do what he says he's going to do. Okay. Let me take you up to another scripture. I'm going to, let me get straight to it. I'm going to Romans 7. 
starting at verse 8 read down through Romans 7 and 8 but sin taking occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of uh, conspice uh, concupiscence which concupiscence let me see concupiscence goes back to uh, G 1939. Uh, Epidumia, desire, craving, longing, desire for what is forbidden, lust. Okay? For sin by occasion, occasion by commandment brought in me all manner of desire, craving, longing, desire for what is forbidden or lust. For without the law, sin was dead. Didn't, know, didn't even know you were sinning. Wanted to get at that man's woman and all these other kinds of things. You're not battling that? Great. But even the, even the smallest of sin, because if you broke one, you broke them all. If you broke one law, you broke them all. So where's your salvation coming from? You? Or is it coming from your high shot? Verse 9, For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life I found to be unto death. The lying that you used to do and all these kinds of things. You read these scriptures and the Lord says that he, he, he put liars to death. You got to have some understanding to be able to, be able to walk in this book. Psalms 5. Verse 6, Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. Leasing is lying. And Yahweh will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. Read that wrong and you can, you can apply to yourself. Be that and you, can, and you can be lumped in there with that. Who is the bloody and deceitful man? Who's that by nature? That's Esau Edom. Scripture says, yeah, your father the devil. Those things that he do, basically paraphrasing those things that he do, you do also. That's a two-third, though. Did you have that in your past? You probably, yeah. So that's why the scripture, don't let your sins weigh you down, has to be part of it. You got, to, you got to have this balance, man. This is all about balance, okay? Because there's a punch and a counter punch for pretty much everything that's in these scriptures. Satan quoted scriptures. Yahweh Shai gave understanding. Okay. So let's read through this Romans 7. Okay. Verse 9. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. The commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me, and it shoot and it slew me wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good was then that which is good made death unto me 
Yahweh forbid, but seeing that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. His flesh has got a certain amount of sin built into it. That was the whole purpose behind it. Scripture says a creature subject to vanity. Solomon said all is vanity. Okay. For that which I do, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would that I do, that for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would that do, I not. But what I hate that I do. For then, for then I do that which I would not. I consent unto the law that it is good. For then I do that which I would not. I consent unto the law that it is good. So I do something and I go off. Okay, and it's something I didn't want to do. I can send unto the law that it is good, that the law is right. And I shouldn't have did that. Now then, there's no more me, no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Big law, little law, small law. So long as you're going to be able to chalk up as far as fabric and things, as far as Esau. Okay. For then that which I, for then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. That's 16. Now then, it, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. You haven't been down. You haven't had download shift yet, so you still you still subject to that, still subject to them thoughts and all those things. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me how to perform that which is good I find not I know what's right why can't I stand on the absolute perfect 100% because of the sin that dwells in me now if I do that I would not it is no more I that do it but sin that dwells in me 21 I find then a law that when I I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. I didn't get away from the evil. So now it bothers me. Because I'm wondering if there's things that are lingering and holding on. Have I cleared it all? Have I got it all out of my, have I got it all gone? I'm not doing these things. So why are these thoughts still there? But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bring me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? This Let me go back up. Twenty one. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil was present with me, for I delight in the law of the most high after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, one against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank 
the Most High through Yahweh Shamashiach, our Lord. So then, with the mind, I may serve the law of the Most High, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So I deal with this battle. The battle is real. The Apostle Boss says it all the time. The biggest battle you're going to have is with yourself. battle is real, the struggle is real, and the things that you got to go through is real. So, don't fold in the process. It's a fight. Send all praises, honor, and glory out to you. How about Shem, how about Shem, and for allowing me to recognize the fight. Giving double honors to the apostles and elders of GMS out of New York because they do rule well. For the brethren around the world, Prince is truth uncut, unfiltered, to give you good, the bad, and ugly of the scriptures, correctly breaking down the prophecies and interaction with people and planet. I send salutations. For the hopeful elect, the hope that's edifying. You say, what, did that, what, what was that about? Understand you're not perfect, but you still got to stay in the fight. Because it's not about you, it's about what you have with Shai done. To the brethren around the world, push the truth and cut up to give me the good, the bad, and the ugly, the prophecies, and interaction with people and planet, and send salutations. Hopefully, like that, I hope that's edifying for the aqua, few and true, and listen to the and charity keep doing so. But for scoring the scoff for reprobate, two third is like 17 other nations. It's not for you. You're in the midst of Jacob's trouble, and it is going to get a whole lot worse. With that, shout a to the first group and a barber ball to the second.